Hi, and welcome to part two of the Hot Rod Deluxe Conversion. In this video, it's a bit of a supplement where I go through some improvements and upgrades that I did to my original build. Someone actually asked me to do one of these conversions for them, and I made sure to do these actual improvements. So please uh, follow along, and hopefully you'll enjoy. First, as a refresher, here's a picture of the original board that I did last time. I used the Mojo Tone kit. I tried to lay everything out and uh, you know it was a pretty decent build but it was a little messy and uh, I felt there were definitely some improvements I could make. Here is a picture of the new board installed actually inside the amp as it's reassembled and if you look carefully you will see there are definitely some differences from the original including the use of a ground bus. Um, as we'll talk about later there was a decent amount of noise in the amp for the uh, noise floor and I wanted to really try my best to reduce that and one of the first places I started was by using a ground bus. It also made it a lot easier to connect to ground for the other connections. Following some advice from others that work in the electronics world, I thought it might be a good idea to utilize RTV sealant and use this to glue down each of the components prior to the soldering. This way, the board is basically preloaded and you're not worrying about resistors or capacitors falling out. And in this picture, you can see all the components nicely tacked down onto the board. I don't have to worry about any of them falling as I'm trying to line up the wires and do the soldering. Another design change that I implemented was an idea that I got from watching one of the D-Lab videos where he was using standoffs to separate the boards. It's kind of a flaw in the fender design where you have a top eyelet board sandwiched against a bottom board. You have wires running underneath. And when you buy this kit, in particular you get it from Harbor Freight, you can see that it's very inexpensive. I usually use these grommets to put wires through the chassis. But that leaves a lot of extra grommets. I really only use two sizes for the wires. So gluing these down with the RTV is very easy. Again, it's very cost effective. I already have them on hand. And you'll see there's a picture here where you could see a nice separation between the two boards. And I think in the long run, this actually helps keep everything stable. And so when assembled, with everything glued down by the RTV connection and using the grommets, you can see you get a pretty nice board. And as we zoom in here, you'll see that those grommets make a nice separation between the bottom board and the top board. As a matter of fact, for the two bolts I used to bolt it down, the bolt actually goes through those grommets. That way when you cinch it down, you still get a really nice separation. So after taking advantage of using those, I really wanted to approach the idea of reducing the noise floor. I didn't talk about it in the last video, but I struggled a bit with really trying to reduce the noise. When I did my 57 Deluxe, I think the wattage was low enough. I didn't hear a lot of background noise. Unfortunately, this was not the case when building the baseman circuit. There was a lot of noise that came through, and I think it's probably due to the fact that I used a master volume, and also I put some switches over near the power supply source. Before completing that build, I did a lot of research on how to make sure heater wires were not going to be the case. And it reduced the noise a lot, but there was still noise coming through that when I really cranked it, and I wanted to take care of that. So you'll see here I did a few things that really helped eliminate it. For starters, I worked on the input noise. I use shielded cable and I move the resistors directly to the grids on the first preamp tube. You can see here in the picture. Continuing on, I used shielded cable for all of the volume pots where the wipers were. And on the master volume, I used it both coming in and going out. I simply grabbed some RCA cable from old reel-to-reel -reel tape players. It was very inexpensive and I already had it on hand. did a lot of good. The idea for this came from some amps I've recently worked on that were either Dumble clones and then also stealing a bit from Soldano. Uh, Soldano is kind of the inventor of the high gain amp and the ultra high gain amp. And as a result, it really worked well. So anyone who is trying to get rid of some noise floor, definitely consider using shielded cable. This is just a way to show a little bit more about how that shielded cable was used you will see that there's heat shrink on one end of it because you need to make sure the ground from one end is isolated. You don't want to cause any ground loops 
And as we'll go in here, you can see on all the volume pots, it's just pretty easy to connect. And now to discuss a few other circuit tweaks. This started with the presence knob. On my first build, I followed the 59 base man the way that it's listed on the schematic. But for this build, I actually upgraded. I converted it to a 25K pot. And I followed what Rob said as an upgrade. I think Fender actually did the same thing. It pulls the DC off the pot and it makes it more effective. I also decided to add what they call a half power switch or a triode pentode switch. You can see here in the drawing from Rob Robinette's site, you're tying the plates and the screens together as opposed to running them in standard format when you want to try to attempt having half power. Not sure it actually takes it down to half power, but it definitely attenuates things. This mod is fairly easy to implement. I wound up putting the switch on the top panel. The only thing you have to be careful of is not to switch it while the amp is on. You should put it in standby, otherwise you'll eventually blow the switch. Here's a nice little snapshot of the switch. It sits between the switch for the negative feedback and also the pilot light. Um, I basically just reamed out what would have been the foot switch hole. Fits right in there. And finally, I wanted to talk a little bit about the adjustable bias circuit. Um, struggled a bit with this on the previous build because I followed Rob's blueprint on his site. But that blueprint was really written for a 50 volt bias tap as opposed to the 40 volt, which is in the hot rods. Um, I stuck with the design that he had in where the divider circuit is. But I came up with the 50K pot and then the 39K bias to ground resistor. This way, you have, in the middle of your adjustment, able to get to the right spot for your bias. In my previous attempts, I was using a decade box, kind of taking some shots in the dark. This time, I actually sat down and did the engineering math. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to let me know, and I'll explain it to you. And now, before you get to hear my buddy Matt, testing everything out, I thought I would do a little bit of a summary as to what happened here. So, as I said, we started out by anchoring down the components using RTV. Also used grommets so that we could have standoffs between the two boards. Added a ground bus, made things very easy and also cleaned things up a lot. Uh, worked on reducing the noise floor, used shielded cables, also moved those input resistors. Upgraded the presence control. Added a pentode triode switch and I modified the bias adjustment, kind of clarified that. Hopefully this was great, and uh, everybody enjoyed it. If you have any comments, please let me know. Now you can hear it, the amp being tested out. is the end of the video. Hopefully everyone liked it. Please leave comments and press like. And until next time, hopefully we'll have some more amp builds or some other things.